isolated, dangerous, and at the tip of the spear in Afghanistan. Restrepo is attacked day and night. It's just after 8 p.m. when suddenly, hey! incoming. Hey! Boy! Get your sons up here! Boy! But the soldiers can't tell where the Taliban are hiding. There's no high-tech way to find the militants. American military superiority doesn't mean much in these mountains. It's guns versus guns. Fire! Fire! So after the fight, the men from Estrepo set out into the darkness to find the Taliban. The terrain is especially difficult to navigate at night. The ground is loose shale that crumbles under their feet. And depth perception is difficult with their night vision monocles. But after hours hunting in the dark, the American troops don't find anything. This is often the mission here, hunting along trails until morning. Leading the American hunt is Viper Company commander, Captain Jimmy Howell. A West Point grad from Waco, Texas, Howell is just 29, but already on his fifth combat deployment in Afghanistan and Iraq. What we want to do is draw them out to the fight have them identify their positions. With the company's adopted stray dog, Airborne, who joins every patrol, Howell's men march into the village of Aliabad, where the locals are known to cooperate with the Taliban. And while it may seem counterintuitive in warfare, Howell wants to be seen by the enemy. Do you think they know we're here by now? I definitely do. Um, anytime we walk out in the daytime, we know they have guys that, that watch us and will report back to their command element and let them know kind of where we are. Being seen draws the Taliban into a fight in the open, where U.S. troops believe they have an advantage. It's a risky tactic of bait and kill, with U.S. soldiers as bait. The villagers in Aliabad are holding a funeral for a woman they claim was killed by American troops. Howell offers his condolences. I want you to know that, that uh, we're sorry for what happened, um, for your loss up on... Uh but the villagers aren't interested. They see the Americans as outsiders, infidels, hostile strangers. The villagers here are completely disconnected, even from the rest of Afghanistan. There's no government or Afghan police. Houses are made of piled stones. Graves are marked with broken rocks. Women rarely go outside. Girls don't go to school. Not because the Taliban prevent them, but by tradition. Many here agree with the Taliban's conservative religious laws. The people in the Korangal speak their own language. Many have never left the valley. The soldiers are clearly frustrated by the villagers' lack of cooperation. You don't accept our talk. Why should I accept your talk? I ask one of the elders why he doesn't help the Americans. We blame the Americans for killing our civilians, he says. Who controls this valley, the American soldiers or the Taliban? The Taliban control most of the area, he tells me. The Americans just control around their bases. After waiting as bait for hours, Howell's men aren't attacked. This time, the Taliban hold back. Took a shot and didn't want to come out and play today. But Howell isn't giving up. Instead, he decides to use bigger bait. All right, we got everyone. Before sunrise, Viper Company rolls out, this time in Humvees, a rare and dangerous move. Since there are only a few roads in the Korangal, Humvees are easy to spot and attack. They're like big bullseyes out here. If the Humvees don't draw out the Taliban, nothing will. The soldiers drive to the village of Karangal, known to have 10 to 20 Taliban fighters. Roger. At daybreak, Howell and a few men set up in a farmhouse overlooking Karangal's terraced fields. But Howell is confident because he has a secret weapon. Overnight, the men from Restrepo quietly moved into Karangal and set up in a safe house. When the Taliban attack, the plan is for the soldiers from Restrepo to come out of hiding and open fire. We've got enough stuff that if, if they do start to hit us, we'll hit them pretty hard back. So, Within minutes, the plan starts to work. The Taliban open fire, exposing their positions. They're firing from two mountain slopes. The troops can see the Taliban's muzzle flashes. 
We've got two elements that are firing on uh, Viper 1-7 from the high ground to their north and northwest break. Howell calls in mortars and 2,000 pound bombs to destroy the Taliban positions. The bombs and mortars are falling simultaneously on both of the mountains. But suddenly, it goes tragically wrong. An American mortar hits the safe house where the soldiers from Restrepo are positioned. 266. It's a direct hit with terrible consequences for the men of Restrepo. We can hear their screams, even from a few hundred yards away. Uh, right now, we're requesting uh, an air medevac. The wounded men in the house release red smoke so a medevac helicopter can find them. But the red cloud and hovering helicopter mark the target for the Taliban. The militants see an opportunity. Captain Howell watches anxiously as the hunters are now the hunted. And as the medevac helicopters continue to evacuate the wounded, they themselves have now come under fire from at least two positions in the valley. An Apache gunship moves in, firing into the hills. Air support has finally arrived to protect what is now a rescue mission. But Howell has another problem, the safety of the rest of his men. He's been out for five hours. His positions are all exposed, and he still has to get his men back to base. Howell expects the Taliban to stage an ambush as soon as they try to leave Karangal. And he's right. As we round a corner, shots ring out. We scramble. Pin down. Backs against a rock wall. Wait for it, Richard. Just wait for it. We try to stay behind a Humvee. As we tried to cross an open stretch of road, we came under attack. There's incoming fire right now. We're using this Humvee for cover as we're trying to get to another base. We're saved by the Apaches. Rocketing the hillside. Until the Taliban stop shooting. Then we see the survivors from Restrepo, the men who'd been hiding in the bombed safe house. They are silent, appear to be in shock, haunted, blood still on their uniforms. One American is dead. He is Sergeant John Penich from Beach Park, Illinois, Restrepo's big brother. Others we'd met, Sergeant Chaz Carter, who'd only joined the platoon a week before, and Private First Class Jeffrey Awanski are among the injured. It's Viper Company's first incident of friendly fire. Boy, boys are devastated about it. You know, I mean, it's, it's one thing to, uh, to have guys that are injured or killed, but it's another thing when it's, it's something that could be prevented. I mean, this is obviously something that could be prevented. But the soldiers can't afford to lose focus because their patrols and their enemies will be out again the next morning.